Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you have tuned in. We are going to have the most wonderful lessons the next two weeks that you have ever heard. This is a must for every true believer. It is a must for every person that don't know Christ as Savior to see what they are missing out on. And we're going to be studying from John chapter 13 through John chapter 17. These are the most exciting lessons that we have ever had concerning our inheritance in Christ. Our inheritance in Christ. The riches of the inheritance of believers. And first of all, the first one that we're going to have is humility. That's why we're beginning in chapter 13 of the book of John. And this is verse 2. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given him all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God. He's the only true God. He's the only person that ever lived in heaven. This is a divine message from God. The greatest person of this universe is Jesus Christ, and it's all about him. And verse 4, he rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. And after he had poured water into a basin, he began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. And Simon said, Then if it, it, this, if I can have any part with you, he wants not only his feet, Lord, he said, but my hands and my head. And Jesus saith unto him, He that is washed needeth not to save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. That means the Holy Spirit has already cleansed us. And ye are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore he said, You're not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done unto you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord, and master have washed your feet what are we to do ye also ought to wash one another's feet for i have given you an example that you should do as i have done unto you now this is the most humble gracious service that needs to be an example of all of us as true believers. This is what Christ is showing us. So this has to be by faith, that's the only way I can please him, and self-denial and deep affection that only the Holy Spirit can impart to those around us. If you're not born again, you can never ever please God. This must be this example reproduced in all servants of Christ. Let's pray. Lord gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we truly praise thy marvelous name. We thank thee for the study of thy word. We pray for each of us that are true believers. We'll take these treasures from this study today and apply them to our lives that we may be able to stand with all the trials and temptations that the world and Satan 
wants to use to defeat us. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. For every servant of thine, we have this victory. May every person see this today and see their great need of living the abundant life that thou hast left for us to live. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So we come to this lesson and this is the riches that Christ has left with us. The mere fact of being a Christian, this is, listen at this, sets us in the center of the highest possible sphere of service. The highest possible sphere of service. This is the most exciting thing that can happen to any true believer. Ephesians 1 through 3. This shows us that he is occupied, the book of Ephesians, with what we have come to be and have in Christ. The book of Ephesians gives us the most wonderful revelation that God has given to man. The book of Ephesians and Colossians. This revelation concerns the body of Christ. Remember, he's the body and we, we are the body and he's the head. And the one thing I want to ask you before I begin these lessons, do we realize what our responsibility is as a believer? That we are representing Christ to this world. This gives us humility. The Holy Spirit gives us humility. But the first one that we have is humility. The work of redemption that we see in Ephesians 1 through 3 is more glorious than the work of creation. The, in Ephesians, this is the riches of Christ. It has in 90 times. It has in Christ 20 seven times. Ephesians is one of the most unique books of the whole Bible. First of all, it's one of the deepest in the Bible. We have the fullness of the power of God, the fullness of Christ, and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Do you know those in your life? So once we see this, all of this in Christ now, those are only those that have accepted Christ as Savior, have eternal life and forgiveness of sin. When you see all that we have in Christ, you're going to see the greatest inheritance that anyone can know. The greatest inheritance. And this is all free. All free. He, Romans 8, 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? This is a free gift. And it is to every true believer because the Holy Spirit brings humility. The Holy Spirit is for holiness. So this is humility. Now we see that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. If you have pride, there is one thing for sure. If you think you're better than someone else, or maybe you have pride because of your race, or because of your color, or because of your beauty. That is sin in God's sight. God hates pride. God hates pride. So that's the first gift that we have is the gift of humility that Christ showed in washing the disciples' feet. Just a servant is all we are. We can accomplish nothing without Christ. The study of his life of intercession focused upon a life for us of separation from the world. 
We are to cultivate habits that make Christ real. Cultivate habit, habits that make Christ real. Christ is the center and source of our spiritual life, the key to all spiritual values. So this is one of the most important lessons you are going to ever hear because you're going to see how rich you are and it's all free. Salvation is free. It is because they concern one of our Lord's last will and testament. Everybody wants to be left something. Everybody wants someone to leave them an inheritance. Christ has done this freely. Freely. All of these are from him. And you can never work for any of these gifts. Here is our inheritance from him, all that he saw fit to transfer to his followers before leaving us. Who was he concerned with before going to the cross? Each of us that are his inheritance. We see this is the parables. This is similar to the parables under consideration, just one of these. Jesus presents himself as a man traveling to a far country who calls his disciples his own servants and delivers unto them his goods. What are his goods? His one thought was of his approaching departure, his departure to leave his disciples with all the wealth that the world cannot contain, all the wealth. First of all, we see his one thought was of leaving them. But what was he going to leave us with? This is the most important question. His one purpose was to acquaint them with the riches of the legacy he was leaving them. With what eagerness should we scan and know each priceless bequest. Priceless. All of these are priceless and they're free. His humility, as we've just seen in the washing of the disciples' feet, that was an example of us. There is no job in the world too lowly for a true believer. And you're never to think that anything that you have, that you have accomplished yet, because apart from Christ, you cannot accomplish anything because all wisdom comes from him. He is our wisdom. He says, without me, you can do nothing. So here, humility was his chief, the chief quality in the life and ministry of our Lord. Every step of his saviorhood was of necessity marked with humility. Just a servant. What about you? Do you look at yourself as a servant? But yet this is the greatest, greatest gift that anyone can have and the most wonderful service when it is done in humility. So it's beginning, of course, his first humility was his incarnation, giving up his God's subsisting life to take on flesh and blood. He left heaven's glory to come down as a baby to go to the cross. His incarnation, he had to become man to die because God can't die and angels can't die. So he had to become man. This was his first one. Then it's continuing humility himself further as a servant among men that we just saw. And then his cultivating, this is the shame, dishonor, and disgrace of the death on the cross, the death on the cross. 
Philippians 2 shows us what this is. Philippians 2 teaches us, says, who being in the form of man, if Philippians 2 verse 6, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, humbled himself, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. See how many times humbling himself? And became obedient even to the death of the cross. The death of the cross was such a shame and such a disgrace. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. He came to destroy the works of the devil. Humility was the price he must pay at every turn. For the spirit of Satan is pride. He was lifted up with pride. That's why he fell out of heaven. He had to be cast out of heaven because of his pride. The nations of the world today have pride. Pride is bringing the United States down. He's bringing everything into the fulfillment of his word. And this is what we're going to see. You can't miss these next few weeks of our program because we're going to give you what is happening in Israel that you will have a greater burden to reach your lost souls because the next step is Armageddon when the United States turns against Israel. You must know this, every person that's listening. So here we see that 1 Peter 5, 6, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Pride is the spirit of Satan. Humility is the spirit of God's Son. What does God's Word say? Walk humbly with thy God. Walk humbly with thy God. Oh, aren't these exciting already? This is the most wonderful lessons that I have ever given out. And I pray that every person that hears these will have a greater burden to reach those around them. Humility is perfect quietness of heart. It is to have no trouble. It is never to be fretted or irritated or sore or dis appointed. That's saying a lot, isn't it? It is to expect nothing, to wonder at nothing that is done to me. To expect nothing, to wonder at nothing that is done to me. Christ, this is, he's our example. This humility is all about Christ. It is to be at rest when nobody praises me. Oh, and when I am blamed or despised. It is to have a blessed home in the Lord where I can go in and shut the door and kneel to my Father in secret and am at peace as in a deep sea of calmness when all around me and above me is trouble. That's humility. That is our first, first inheritance in Christ. The second one is his love. John 13, 34 and 35. A new commandment I give unto you. Now, none of us do this. We must be obedient to these to receive the blessings of the inheritance and victory. We're going to see it takes all of these to have victory. In the end, we're going to have victory. Everything that is in here gives us victory, but we must obey the word. A new commandment I give unto you, John 13, verse 34, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. 
By this shall all men know you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. As a true child of God, love has two basic elements. A desire to please, to serve, and to fellowship. And then my ministry becomes a delight. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. What kind of love did he have? For God so loved you. I want everybody that's listening today to put your name here. If you have any doubt that you are a child of God, for God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a gift that is eternal. It can only be received by believing in the blood of Jesus Christ, in the blood of Jesus Christ. In Christ, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. All of you that's listening today, if you have any doubt, because tomorrow may be too late, right now is the only moment that we have assurance of of living. So here we see that it is his love with such a bequest, what can compare? All of this is free because of his love, because he came from heaven to go to the cross to die instead of me. The love of the loves of this earth are sweet. His is the sweetest of them all. Other loves seem satisfying. His is supremely so. Another may offer us love that is steadfast. In comparison with his love, it is only fickle. Remember, if anyone loves you, they don't want you to sin. Always remember that. Earth's loves are often sacrificial. His love is set on utterly new standards of sacrifice and that he laid down his life for friend and foe, even for his enemies. He laid down his life for them. And if they reject this love, they go to a place called hell that God had to make for the devil and his angels. His love is perfect. Satan has no love for you. There's no peace in sin. There's no love in sin. There's no joy in sin. Satan makes it look good, but in the end, you're going to be down where he has to go because of his pride and his deceitfulness. So here we have this greater love he has bequested to each of us. The command is that his love shall so characterize our life and all of his disciples in their mutual relationship that it shall be in turn become the badge of testimony of discipleship to all men. This is why he has bequested his love. To love one another, he died for us. And we're not even willing to forgive someone that hurts us. He died for those that hurt him. Do men see in you this mark of discipleship, the evidence that you are the heir of his love? Do men know his love through knowing you? Do men know his love through knowing you? We can pray for our city if we have this kind of love, and God will answer our prayers. His home. The greatest thing in the world is his home that he has prepared for us. John 14. This is such a blessing. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. This is the greatest gift, and it, it's already paid for. 
In my father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Now here is the lesson that we need to know. Matchings that he has prepared. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. You see, this is the kind of place that he has for us. It is a place that he prepared for us right now, while he is in heaven, he is preparing a place for us as true believers. Now, what kind of a place is this? Well, let's turn to 1 Peter 1, verse 4. To an inheritance. For every believer, you haven't worked for this, you didn't pay for it, and it is eternal. To an inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you eternally pure, already reserved. Now what more, you work all of your life for an earthly house. This house I hath not seen nor ear heard, the glories he has for us. And what is he doing? He is drawing his own more closely about him as our Lord now speaks in the utmost intimacy of what he has for us with a depth of tenderness dictated by his approaching departure and reveals the separation that he is going to leave them. Separation. But he is going to leave them this great inheritance. He don't want them to be sad. He wants them to rejoice. What about you? When you hear the rest of these lessons on what he has, what was his first and chief concern? He lays bare his heart before them and gives us all of these wonderful truths in John chapter 13 through John chapter 17. Our humility, he's inherited given us a gift, our inheritance, our love, and our home, a place prepared for us. Bring your precious one, 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 b